This would be where I do a live action movie since last episode was with an animated movie. However, today's subject was just so interesting that I really couldn't ignore it and just had to do it. What movie is it, you might ask? Well, ever hear of The Fearless Four? No, not that group. I'm talking about the animal version. Yes, this one. Anyway, this was a German production that was distributed by Warner Brothers. It was based off a Brothers Grimm story called Town Musicians of Bremen, which was also the German title to this movie. Now, as far as I can tell, there is no DVD release of the film, just a VHS one. It also has less than five stars on IMDb, and yet seemingly is liked by many people. Then again, ratings and comments only serve to get you interested enough so that you yourself can watch it and form your own opinion. And right now I want to form my own. So let's see what this movie's got. We start off with one of our main characters, Buster. A dog voiced by famous musician James Ingram. Buster was sold to be a hunting dog, but as we soon see, he's more about singing and does a really good job at it. Say how silly this looks. Say how his dancing is awkward to see. I'd take that over the rapping dog. Uh, what the? Body to each his own well, at least we know who fathered Rita. However, the Baron is displeased by his dog's behavior and hires someone from Mixmax, the evil corporation of the movie, to stuff him into a trophy. And I wonder, who does that for a normal dog? A rare specimen. Coffee, pretty pretty, what? <laughs> Bank of Greed? Haven't heard generic naming like that since Tough Puppy. Oh, oh, this will be fun. You'll make a great mummy. Yes, off to life everlasting. <laughs> oh, come now, you're not the main villain. Only he can laugh like that. No, no, please, no! Oh, oh, great, he went into berserker mode. Now you're all gonna die. <laughs> Even the most gentle dog has his limits. Our next main character is a donkey named Fred, voiced by famous blues guitarist B.B. King. He prefers singing about his troubles rather than marking. We enter this world with a miserable cry. It's a track from day one. Tell them mamas we die Even the angels cry in heaven Tears are washing us away This upsets his owner, mainly because he doesn't work as well as he used to, and decides to get help from Mixmax to replace him. What the hell? Seriously, what's going on here? A mechanical singing centaur that's meant to work on a farm? Just, who are these Mixmax people anyway? They specialize in taxidermy and now robotic engineering? What's next, bioengineering? I'm a power to. Oh, I'm a power to. <laughs> So Fred is rejected, but thankfully some wasps that he knew, but we'll never see again, rescue him by causing the car to crash, which causes him to meet Buster. Am I in heaven? Are you St. Peter? No, my name is Buster. They call me the Melody Barker. They call me Fred. Yeah, Fred isn't all that smart. 
but it's kind of funny seeing his honesty firsthand. But in any case, they decide to travel together, and without knowing the signs were switched, they go with whatever the bone decides. Paris, here we come. Our next main character is a cat named Gwendolyn, voiced by another famous musician, Alita Adams. She's the pet of the now-deceased Aunt Wanda, who left the house to her nephew and his bratty son. Gwendolyn also knows the location of two special jewels that the parents want, and because she won't reveal the location, they think of getting rid of her. Well, you know who to call. <laughs> <laughs> I got him! You left today without a goodbye. Big girls never cry. Big girls never cry. So, yeah, that's three main characters with good singing voices and songs that I have to say are impressive considering that this is an English dub to a German movie. Not that it fixes the hit and miss humor, but at least the songs are good so far. Aunt Wanda passed away. Sorry to hear about that. We're headed for Paris. Come with us. We'd make a great trio. Not with a cat. No way. Hey, you were hitting on a fox earlier. I'd shut up if I were you. Our last main character is Tortellini, voiced by Shuchero. We don't get a solo from him, but we do see him make an ass of himself. Don't they know who I am? Incredible. See if I can. I, for one, have possibilities you can only dream of. Yeah, I'm calling it now. These guys are the umbrella corporation of this world. They have control over every single human need, including the food industry. If that doesn't spell out evil corporation, I don't know what will. At any rate, our fourth main character joins the party. Oh, you're talking to the right person. I can sing better than Michael Jackson and Elvis put together. Do I sense a challenge? So with everybody established, how do they sing as a group? Awesome. Unfortunately, they get lost, so they get help from a one-shot character. What's all that racket about in my forest? Who are you? Who are you? The nearest city is Bremen. Bremen is not what it used to be. You don't want to die young. Do you? For me, even Bremen is fine. We're artists, and good artists will succeed anyway. We'll do anything for attention, even kill ourselves. So she leads our band out of the forest, where they eventually reach the town. Yeah, is it now too late to go to Paris? The Dr. Greed, the notorious tyrant in his mix max gang, dominated the city, as he had strange powers, and he got them. Rumor had it from the devil himself. That sounds interesting. Do we ever find out if it's true? Nope. They also don't know there's no singing allowed in town, but regardless, they sing anyway. The chilling ghost way Some things of the past I can't seem to forget Looked around in the dark Saw my brothers right there I'm no longer alone I'm no more on my own I thought singing was for kids. Hi, Mozart Mouse. Hi, Mozart Mouse. Stop! Oh, boy, oh, boy. Oh, they got some nerve. in the center of town, too. Hey, it's that one guy who's always somebody's meat-headed thug. Um... Who are you exactly? Bam, gentlemen, my compliments. You're exceptionally talented. Well, I think I could get you the proper contract through our advertising department for starters. <laughs> well paid, of course. So with that, we finally get to see the technological leader of Mix Max, Dr. Greed, voiced by Ian James Corlett. Did say a dog a dog, a cat and a rooster? Oh my god, it's Cobra Commander! <laughs> no? Naga hide? Well, I was close.
It was somebody from G.I. Joe. Four singing animals. Sensational. Perfect for us. Nobody would dare accuse us of being against animals again. Yes, those PETA fools will never think to accuse me of using animals to advertise our second-rate sausages. We shall dominate the food industry. You can't work for anyone other than Mix Max Trust. If you should do so, you'll have to pay back everything if you stick to the contract. Uh, you have it made. Travel, luxury, world fame. And our song selection. I mean, we'd like to pick our own. At least they're smart enough to question their rights in music choice, but sadly their leader thinks otherwise. Wrong. It's my career. He's a... You can write something I want to tell me. And that's the shipping of this movie. Yes, they're the main pairing. Isn't that strange? So each of them, except Buster, decide on what they would want with the money they'll make. I'll get myself an opera house and produce an opera. Yeah. No, you stay away. I'll buy back on Wanda's estate and make it into an animal shelter. Plot point. But really, don't expect a lot from that little subplot, as that's something only Gwendolyn accomplishes in the end. I want us to stay together, as long as we live, because together, we can do anything. This would mean something if there were any major scene in the movie where their teamwork is questioned. Anyway, now comes their first paid job, and well... It's another song that to them is bad, but to most people, it's at least sung well. We're happy, we're grateful, we're pleased with the trust. They tell us what to do, they do the thinking for us. They educate our children, they're the future, they're the best. And I have to say, they did a good job with the artistic approach. It really feels like a rise to fame moment in how they influence the public in the entertainment industry. Really nice touch, movie. <laughs> However, they get tired of playing the same song over and over, so they bring it up with Platini. You must keep singing our jingle even if it kills you. Your own compositions. <laughs> what exactly does Mix Max stand for? Who's Mix? And who's Max? Why don't you admit we're talking about sausages here? What have you got against sausages? How dare you question the authority of our sausages? Sausages are the world to us. There's nothing we can do. They're all our voices. Not just our voices, our souls, too. It's like with the entertainment industry now and how they only want the person for their talent to market silly things, like sausages through jingles. So they decide to turn things around by singing their thoughts on the whole company, but that only lands them in a prison cell. Well, except Fred, who gets it worse. Oh. Wait, no. <laughs> After that torture scene, Mozart shows up, hoping to get them to play whatever music he had, but then decides that it's more important to actually get them out of the prison cell. But how? Uh, let me see. Stop! Stop! Okay, how does he blow up the bars by just enraging? What, were they explosive or something? So with Mozart's help, they escape the cell and soon stumble across Dr. Greed's plan. Fast food sausage machine! It'll produce 12,000 sausages an hour. Let me explain how it works. Right up here is where it goes in, and down here is where it comes out again. We're having a test run next week. Only the knives yeah, I don't really get it. What's going into the machine? The sausages? Some go in, more come out? How does it work? 
So once they learn the animals got away, Fatty here gets the shaft. Ripple six. Let this be a reminder to you all that this organization will not tolerate failure. Silly army of greed. <laughs> and yes, this wouldn't be an animal movie without some sort of animal abuse message to it. We'll get you out of here, I promise. With Mozart's help again, they escape through the sausage machine, and we get to see how it would work even without the knives. <sighs> You know, from what I'm seeing, there's no point in the machine where they would be cut to ribbons or whatever. Seriously, how does this thing work? Answer me! <laughs> and even though it wasn't too long ago, we need another animal reminder from PETA. They'll pay for abusing those poor innocent kittens. They shall feel my wrath! Oh goody, flaunting your ego again, I see. My chicks could see that. Hold your beak. I promised those animals we'd get them out of there. Yes, you did. I did too. Well, alright. But can anybody tell me how? Yeah, that's how quickly he reforms. Hey man, we promised to free them animals, you selfish rooster. We gotta help them. Oh, okay. I'll help. First step is to show up again. This time, we'll turn the tables. They can't do the show without us. We'll go back and tell them we've changed our minds. Fear may be contagious, but so is courage, my friends. She's right, you know. They're so desperate, they'll gladly take them back without knowing why. Especially considering how it ties into Dr. Greed's plan. We'll be celebrating my election party with a big concert in three days. We need those four, and their song more than ever. Everything must work as planned. You know how important this is? Why, uh, certainly. My presidency is at stake. So let me get this straight. You mean to tell me you've gone out of your way to expand your company's business, from selling sausages to all those other things we saw your guys do, including a military-like order, just so you can become president of Germany? I... <sighs> Don't know what to say. This guy's ambitions are just seriously out there. I mean, how do you go from a fast food president to the president of an entire nation? It doesn't work that way. So with the concert on and the animals in some new duds, they just have to worry about the pet snake with a machine gun. But Mozart decides to spend his last scene of the movie snake charming it. And yes, this really is the last time we see him. So goodbye, Mozart. You were somewhat useful. Mixed Max makes the world go round. Smell the roses, let the showdown begin. Stand up! And save us, and let the showdown begin. It is true. Music can force a message onto people, and right now, they want revenge on Mix Max. Down with their sausages! For now on, it's Kieran's pickled foods for me. Yeah, the win, the win. So now all that's left is to get rid of Dr. Greed once and for all. And to do that, they'll replicate what they did in the original story by standing on each other's backs. But instead of singing, it'll be more for scaring. What in the world is that? <laughs> and now the final battle! Why did I think installing a falling floor tile trap was such a good idea? Curse my satanic-inspired technology! Ah! 
So with all the animals freed, there is only one thing left to do. Self-destruct sequence now initiated. Thank you for choosing self-destruct. Have a nice day. Oh, why did I install a self-destruct button to the entire company? What part of me ever wanted that? So to wrap up the movie, we see that the red and white jewels that Gwendolyn knew about were actually on the painting of Aunt Wanda. And it's haunted. Nice. But other than that, she did keep to her word of making this into an animal shelter, and we get one last song. They talk about the two of us. I hear their voices in my sleep. We are wrong for each other. Every word against you cut so deep. Don't you worry about the pain, baby. Close your eyes. I'll take care of you till the end of time. That's what I'll do. Nothing ever stays the same. I'll be there, so don't you worry. So that's the end of The Fearless Four. What did I think of it? Well, considering the bad CGI, the silly plot, the hit and miss humor, a subplot that lacks fleshing, and characters who come and go, I have to say that I... I liked it. Yes, this film is incredibly silly for all things said, the PETA-inspired messages, and the fact they brought famous singers for their main cast to maybe draw in a crowd. But at the same time, there is a bit of charm to it. The 2D animation looks really good for its time. I did giggle at plenty of moments throughout the movie, and I do enjoy the main cast. Except maybe Tortellini. Plus, their singing and voice work is not only good, but fitting too. If anything, this movie's biggest strength is in its music, as it's all sung well and nice to listen to. Okay, maybe except one. For a modernization of an old fairy tale, it did okay despite relying on cartoon movie antics. I'd say it's worth buying it just for the music alone. Otherwise, I'd say this is an underrated animated movie that probably should have had better attention. I mean seriously, no DVD release or a soundtrack? Screw you, Warner Brothers! Now I'd like to thank Kid Crash for finding this movie, and to everyone else, I'll try to watch your requested movies in the future as well. But this film felt like it needed more attention than anything I've ever reviewed, and I hope maybe you yourselves end up seeing this entirely as well. I'm the Media Hunter, bringing you movies straight from the wild.